Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we're going to quieten down the Ferrari engine. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, those of you who've been watching previously will know that this is my uh, 1973 Alfa Romeo 2000 GTV that I have swapped in a Ferrari 360 engine. And um, it's getting closer. It's getting to the uh, to the, the pointy end of the, uh, of the journey. And if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. Uh, it does help us out. Now, uh, one of the things that I didn't get to, uh, those watching previously will have seen that I built the exhaust for this car and never finished it out the back because I never had the mufflers. I actually ordered the mufflers in February 2021. So what's it now? Uh, it's March. It's 13 months ago I ordered the mufflers and there was just delay after delay. They said, oh yeah, no, they, look, we, we won't have them till June and then we won't have them till October and then we won't have them till December and then we won't have them till February. And it's still, uh, they never came. So I managed to uh, cash those in and actually found somebody who had a set on the shelf. And what I was waiting for was this. So um, this is a two and a half inch muffler, but it actually is a, um, a switchable muffler. And I've actually got two of these. Uh, so basically, uh, it has a valve inside that can open up and let the uh, um, exhaust gases pass straight through or closes up and it does a bit of a, uh, um, a loop inside and actually will quieten it down. So that's the, uh, this is the plan today, is to finally fit these to the car and uh, work out exactly where they're going to come out the back of uh, the Ferrari. All right, so my first task was to install all the things that are gonna be under the back here where the mufflers need to go, uh, first of all, so that I can work out where I'm gonna locate everything. And um, as you can see, there's lots of stuff under the car that uh, needs to be given some space. So I put the exhaust back on. Obviously, it's not hanging the way it's going to be hanging because it's sideways, but that's less of an issue. What I really need to concentrate on is where the exhaust is gonna come out the back, and also where they're gonna have room to sit. So with the, um, the, the muffler, they're actually still quite a large unit, physically large unit, and I've got a space just right here, and uh, the equivalent space just down here where they can go. I've marked an even space on the back where I want my mufflers to come out. So I'm gonna to have to cut this rear valance and remake it to shape around these mufflers uh, the way I want because the original muffler, um, it uh, comes out on an angle on the, uh, the 105, which is why it's got this odd shape cut out here. Um, these are obviously not gonna come out that way. They're gonna come out straight. So I'm gonna make a whole new rear lower um, sort of exits for that. That's, that's easy enough. So making them square and center is my main priority. And then obviously, as I said, it's mounting them up, getting them, tucking them far enough under the car, uh, but also clearing all of the, uh, the motor mechanism for them and, uh, and just sort of getting the right spot. So now I've worked out where I want them. I need to now try and get some mounts to mount these mufflers into place.
I found it easier to flip the car upside down and I've sat the mufflers in here. As you can see, it's a tight fit between the air conditioning condensers and the fuel pump, etc. Yes, I know there's a fuel pump and stuff going in amongst the, uh, uh, near the exhaust. Can't be helped uh, and it will be heat shielded, so I'm not overly concerned about that. But at the moment, what I'm trying to do is trying to get these mufflers sitting nice and even. And uh, I've got my, the outer marks here on either side uh, to line them up and get them uh, nice and square. And I'm just trying to get them level and, uh, and square. So now we have the mufflers mounted nice and straight and square exactly where we want them. We now need to connect up the muffler to the existing exhaust. So I just spent all that time then uh, tacking this piece into place and then I went back and reviewed my video just to make sure it would clear and this is actually going to interfere with the pan hard rod that comes across here at, at full bump. So um, now that I've uh, made that all fit I'm going to have to cut it out and uh, redo it so it needs to sort of stay up higher and come in um, at this sort of steeper angle to be able to make sure it will actually clear without having to go in and refit the entire rear end. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's cut these tacks off and redo it. Okay, well that is a much better angle uh, going into the exhaust. It's gonna give me plenty of space. Uh, you can sort of see the mount for the pan hard rod over there. Comes over this side. There's plenty of space now for the, uh, the exhaust to go through in the pan hard rod. So we're gonna go over and do the same thing on the other side. Oh, and I'll also note that on the uh, MIG, I actually switched over to stainless wire. Just makes it a, uh, a little less rust prone on the stainless exhaust. Okay, so both sides now are connected up to the mufflers and the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through and break these welds here and add in some of these Raceworks V-band clamps so that it can be disconnected so that we can actually get the rear end off. Even though we do have a bolt on point here, um, I am not certain that we're gonna be able to get the uh, exhaust off if I left it in one piece over the top of the, uh, the diff that's here. So um, I'll still make a, a, a join there Got the V-band clamps, so let's do that now. My welds are definitely not the prettiest, but uh, I've done most of this side now, the underside. So now it's time to take the exhausts off and uh, finish them up. And then we can look at what we're gonna do about mounting them a little bit more permanently.
All right, so you can see I've made a reinforcing plate for the floor and a couple of brackets on here. And I've got my rubber hangers on. They're uh, all there ready to go. So now the mufflers are mounted and, uh, and free hanging on the back. So uh, it's time to flip it up the correct way and do something about the cutouts at the back. All right, that is looking really good. That's what I was, uh, what I was going for. Um, the, uh, the mufflers, obviously you can see them quite clearly from this low angle, which is actually under the car. But um, once it's driving, they'll be reasonably hidden. You are gonna see them a bit. It would be nice if they were further back, but that's the only place I can fit them. So um, I think we're gonna have to call it for this week. I just don't have uh, any more time, but next week we definitely have to start uh, adding tips and bringing them out the back, which should uh, change things up again. So hopefully you'll join me for that. But uh, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, following the success of the mid-engined Dino race cars, Ferrari began work producing the Dino 206 GT road car. The Dino 206 GT was designed by Pininfarina and built by Scaglietti, and it used a mid-mounted transverse 2.0-litre V6 which was designed by Aurelio Lompredi. This was a detuned version of the race engine, and these engines were built by Fiat and also used in the Fiat, Dino Coupe and Spider. In Ferrari's fashion at the time, they quoted their cars as 180 horsepower, while Fiat quoted a more realistic 160 horsepower. This is interesting because the engines were built on the same line and there was no discrimination between the destination, whether they were going to Fiat or Ferrari. Only 152 206 GTs were built and they were all left-hand drives. In 1969, the 246 GT was released for the larger engine, 2.4 litre engine, and this one made 195 horsepower. These cars were now built with steel bodies to save costs and weighed 1,080 kilos, which was quite a jump from the previous 206 GTs, which were built with aluminium bodies and only weighed 900 kilos. In 1971, an open top Spider GTS was released. So the 246s were Ferrari's first high number production car and they released 3,761 cars over their six year run. All right, we have mufflers, finally, after a uh... 13 month wait, I finally have some mufflers on the car. Um, so next week I'll, uh, I'll obviously do the cutouts and the exhaust tips and then it's just the, um, it's just making sure all the panel gaps are right before we uh, go to paint. That's it's pretty much the, the final run. That's the exciting bit. You better make sure you're not covered in golden retriever fur when you paint because... Um, I know, I, I, <laughs> I, that stuff goes everywhere. It really does. <laughs> all, right. all right, like and subscribe. If you I haven't and if you want to see the videos a day early and watch Jeff do crazy things including various forms of self-mutilation and destruction in the garage it seems to be that way it does seem to be that way um you can follow on Patreon see the videos a day early for any ads and um follow me on Facebook and Instagram uh yeah there's always little compilation videos and stuff I put on uh, on Facebook so uh all right guys <laughs> we'll see you next time <laughs> bye Ferrari began work producing the Dino 206 GT road car. Following the success of the mid-engined, oh my God, what's wrong with me today? Dino race cars. <sighs> Two liter V12 designed by- V6. Oh, V6. <laughs> Two liter, or two liter V6 designed by Aurelio Lampredi. So close, let me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> a mid-mounted transverse 6 litre, no, 2 litre, V6, V6 2 litre, in 96 to 9, but provided quite a jump in weight from, what, 900 kilo, bleh. I just read it in an oven top spider. <laughs> 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 this is nice. how bad your handwriting is, oven or open?